Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock to determine if it's a buy or a sell. At the end of the video, we're going to look at the financial ratios. Leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer. The company we're going to look at is AltaSource Portfolio Solutions. It provides real estate and mortgage services. The company offers portfolio management and related technology products, asset recovery and customer relationship management services. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $156.4 million. So it's a micro cap company because its market cap is below 300 million. They're trading at $10. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm gonna pull their actual free cash flows and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. We also need the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement. And then we're going to pull the revenue, which are the sales for each year. I want to take a quick look at the numbers. So they have positive free cash flow each year, which is good, but they did have negative net income in two years and their sales are declining every year, which is not a good thing to see as an investor. Let's look at a capital structure. They pay 21 million of interest on their debt. Let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet. We'll go to liability section. And long-term debt of 288 million. That's debt due after 12 months. Since interest payments are tax deductible, let's get their effective tax rate. We have to go back to 2016, income of 44 million, taxes of 12 million, effective tax rate of 29%, cost of debt is 5.3%. Let's get the cost of equity, we need the beta for that. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. Beta of 1.6, so the stock moves a little more than one and a half times the market. So it's a little volatile, not too bad, as long as it's not above two the beta. Let's go back to their balance sheet, get their current assets, because we need to calculate the current ratio later. And they have 184 million of current assets. And let's see what that is. 125 million of cash, 35 million of net receivables, that's how much money is owed to the company, 6.2 million of other. Let's get their current liabilities, that's 88 million. Let's see what that is. 22 million of accounts payable, that's how much this company owes other companies. 1.7 million of taxes payable, that's how much they owe the government taxes. 43 million of accrued liabilities, these are expenses that have been incurred, but they haven't paid yet. 5.2 million of deferred revenue, this is when the company makes a sale and receives payment, but it hasn't yet delivered a product or service, so it books it to deferred revenue. When it does deliver the product or service, it pulls it out of deferred revenue and on the income statement as revenue. Other of 3.3 million. Stockholders equity of negative 22 million, that's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. So that means the liabilities are more than the assets. Common stock of 25 million, retained earnings of 272 million. Let's go back to the income statement and get their operating income, that's 14 million. Let's look at a capital structure. 100% debt, cost of debt is 5.3%, and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted them back to today using the weighted average cost of capital that's in green. We get a value of the company of $131 million. We divide that by 16 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $8.40. They're so trading at $10, so they're trading at 19% premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street has. They're at $5.50, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So it seems like it peaked around $40, but it's at a pretty low point. I project there's a 45% chance of default within the next 12 months. Let's look at the financial ratios. Negative PE, great price of sales, negative price to book. So PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. Negative net income, so negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. 
To calculate sales per share, that's revenue or shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, there are 0.2, so investors are paying 20 cents for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They have negative equity, so they have negative price to book. A good current ratio, a low interest coverage ratio, and no ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. Negative net income, so negative ROE. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, and they're at 0.7, so they cannot cover their interest payments. So this is the first company I did a video on in the mortgage finance industry, so I don't have anybody to compare them to. Seems like a pretty risky stock from this point, but if you're looking to invest, you really gotta dig into numbers and learn a lot more about the company and about their future goals. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment, I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.